And we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP, which is a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard, and skincare alchemy, and the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our hope and desire is to help amazing designers find great players who love their games, and amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. We do that in a lot of different ways, but the most fun way is sitting down with those creators uh, to play their games, which is what we're doing tonight. I'm sitting down with Sean Drake from a couple of Drakes uh, to play Dead Belt, which is their newest project that has just launched over on Kickstarter today. 
um, but also has currently funded. So congratulations for that. Uh, but there's a big campaign in front of folks. So hopefully uh, people who join us tonight uh, who are thinking about uh, watching it or who haven't heard about the project yet. We'll go over there and check it out. You can go to the link right below Sean's face, uh, ttrpg.link slash deadbeltks will take you uh, right there. Um, also, Sean, why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are, what you do, but most importantly, tell us a little bit about Deadbelt. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Sean Drake. I'm one half of a couple of Drakes. Uh, my wife, Navi's the other half, but she'll be joining us a little bit later. Uh, and we are the writers and game designers of uh, not just Dead Belt, but a couple other games you might have heard of. We do uh, Court of Blades, Disaster Piece, Hedge, uh, number of number of small weird games done fast is kind of our kind of our niche, right? Um, but Dead Belt is a uh, tabletop role playing game, solo and co op now, uh, of desperate scavengers picking over the bones of junk starships, hoping to pay down their just predatory loans um it's disaster capitalism in space guys and we are going to go out here and pick the bones of some dead ships and uh hopefully come back uh, a little bit richer and uh, a little well hopefully we don't die out there but uh <laughs> you know sometimes that happens it's okay it, it happens fast yeah uh, I'm very excited to sit down and play. Um, we also have a, a virtual play space we're going to be using to help navigate that uh, in Roll20. I'm going to pop that up on the screen um, next to us. Uh, no, we did talk. It's than it is. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is just to help us keep track of things uh, around the around the table also, too. Uh, move tokens around, other stuff like that. But uh, you don't need a lot to play the game, right? You need something yeah. to use as tokens. Uh, you exactly. need a deck, standard deck of cards. Standard deck um, of cards with the jokers, 2d6, and a couple of household objects to use as tokens. There you um, go. We've done them with like quarters and, and, and dimes, and we've done them with like little minis. Uh, we've done them with spare dice. Like it, it's not, not an intensive kind of game. Awesome. Um, mostly you just need the little books, uh, of which there are going to be three little zines. One is going to be your, uh, your core book, and then you've got two books that are your, your little oracle books. So awesome. That's what you're getting it. in the. Uh, in the Kickstarter there. Love it. Love it. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and when you're, but when you're playing all the way across Pennsylvania from somebody, uh, you got to have a way, you got to have a way to, to pass the tokens back and forth. Exactly. So exactly. No, you got it. Um, and so uh, I'm, like I said, super excited to sit down and play. Uh, we always use a couple tools here on the channel. Um, whenever we're playing a two-player game, which is one of my favorite ways to play, uh, our biggest thing is just treat each other like humans, which is a great way, way to play at any table. I, I highly encourage at the core of every a safety tool rule, but we do use lines, veils, and the X cards still. Um, sure. We have discussed it in advance, but also um, the lines uh, that we kind of discussed were um, sexual violence, sexual coercion, uh, imperilment of children, um, any sort of um, uh, bigoted phobias uh, yeah. being off limits uh, as well. Anything else you want to add uh, to lines or veils? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like I said, this is this is a game where we're we're pretty much going to be belters out on the job. Right. So, you know, we'll probably have some, some conversations, but, uh, but, but more working, just kind of working through it. Um, and then work together. you mentioned, um, so we're going to be playing, playing the co-op mode. Mm -hmm. It's also a solo mode. And I believe there there's something called a rivalry mode. There is. So, so what's you, the difference uh, between co-op and rivalry? It's good. Uh, how mean spirited you want to get really. Okay. Uh, so rivalry, you're going to be playing two belters kind of fighting over the same, the same ship, right? You're trying to get the salvage out before they do. You're leaving nasty surprises for the other guy. You're calling up over comms and, you know, making belittling, disparaging comments and telling them how, you know, you're going to get it out faster than they are and you're going to leave them out here drifting. Uh, there are some mechanics for, uh, for for leaving nasty little surprises and making the bad news worse and making sure that the uh, the salvage isn't all it's cracked up to be by the time they get there. So Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm excited to play. Um, I know we can both manipulate everything, but why don't you uh, go ahead and kind of take us in, kind of explain how we get started and get going. All right. So we, we talked a little bit offline about this, but uh, the first thing you do is you make your belter. You choose one of the, uh, the six archetypes that kind of speaks to you. Uh, they all have different uh, kind of stat layouts, and then they've got some special abilities that kind of let them break the rules of the game in fun and interesting ways. Uh, Tony, you're going to be playing a slicer, right? I am playing a slicer. So rip my slicer companion. Rip the tonight. slicer, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, slicers are are geniuses. They are mechanical and uh, and technical masterminds that are out here on the belt trying to finance like the next great invention. Um, you uh, you start with some extra gear. Uh, you start with being able to carry a little bit more. Okay. Um, and then you've also got you know some abilities that allow you to circumnavigate some of the worst news out here on the belt by using your uh, your gear and your ingenuity. 
Cool. Uh, I, on the other hand, am going to be playing a cowboy, which is an adrenaline junkie who is in it for the red hot thrill of it all. Um, I specialize in walking in space. So when the ship starts breaking apart, I'm going to be your best friend. Cool. Uh, I love it. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, there's a uh, veteran. Uh, there was one that was, it was like scrounger, but it wasn't, I'm trying to think of what it was. There's a scoundrel. Scoundrel. Yeah, there's, there's a scoundrel. There's the void rat, which is. Void uh, rat is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, no, the, um, the void rat is, uh, is one of the younger, younger belters who uh, can still shinny through all of the, all the vents and get away from things easier. I love it. Um, I'm super excited. Um, and so you said there's a different kind of stat array we've got is like grit, like grits, like physical gears, how much stuff you have on you. Right. right? So, so, so grit is going to be like your, um, like your, your knowledge, your know-how, your moxie, right? Okay. Like if, if things go badly, you spend some grit because you've seen this kind of thing before. This isn't your first rodeo. Cool. Uh, and that'll get you a, a mixed success even when you get a failure. Okay. Um, gear before you before you engage with one of the prompts in the game, uh, and well after after you've read through it and you see how bad it'll be if you fail, you can decide to you know reach for your tool belt and uh, spend some gear to make sure that you've got an extra die to roll when you're circumnavigating okay. that uh, that that prompt. Cool. Glow is your flashlight. That's your Omni Flash. You can use that to check other uh, other modules that are you know contiguous with the module that you're on, kind of like. Oh, nope, that, that place looks like it sucks. I'm not going over that way. Okay. Um, and then load is how much stuff you can carry. So when we find salvage, it's going to have uh, points of load. Um, either it's going to be, you know, one load or it's going to be up to, I think the, the biggest one we have is a 10 load that requires two belters to carry it simultaneously. Cool. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll pick through one of these ships. But the first thing that we're going to do, now that we know who we are, uh, Rip and Stokes are going to go out on, we, we took a Kestrel, which is not a Kestrel, a Jackdaw, sorry. Uh, a jackdaw to um, kind of give us a twenty-spot uh, cargo hold, but that has us in three debt with the uh, with the bank. Okay. Um, and every time we come back, the bank we we roll to see if they are going to extend us some extra credit, which we can use to buy all kinds of goodies in addition to whatever we find out on the boats, or we're going to see if they compound our loan. And if we ever get to ten cred, they repossess our ship. I love it. Right. All right. Uh, so um, first thing we're going to do is now that we've, we've got our got our Kestrel, we're going to generate what kind of boat that we are. Uh, we're going to find out here on the belt when, uh, when Rip and Stokes are, are young and hungry and, and, and ready to make their fortune out here. So do you want to roll me uh, roll me two dice? Yeah. Two D six. All right. Two D six, sir. All right. And do you want the, the total of both of them? Nope. I just want you to read me one number. My D66 style roll. So we got a, we got a 44. Okay. So that is going to be a tier one merchant vessel. Okay. So this is a, this is a fairly, fairly, uh, small baseline, uh, little merchant, um, cargo freighter looks a little bit like this. So I'm going to lay out the cards real quick. I'm going to go through the rigor room roll that, uh, that roll 20 requires me to go through to, to, to make this thing work the way I want it to. Um, and then I will start dealing out some cards, sir. I'm a T-Rex is very excited about the game, uh, but they also asked an important question. That's, do we get the name of the ship? There is a space for ship ID. Rather there than is. us doing that chat, why don't you suggest some some ship names? Heck yeah. Uh, we'll pick one, uh, and and we'll name our ship based on y'all's input while we're setting everything else up. Um, so give me, give me some of those ship names in the chat. All right, we've got uh, the bee's knees. Uh, Bodie McFo Boatface is a classic. Is of course. Is, yeah. I'm a T-Rex. Uh, Skipper is good. I like uh, Chase the Ghost came in with Checkered Past. I like that Checkered one. Checkered Past is great. Is oh, really man. Good. Um, can I make a typey type? You should be able to. You go over to the, uh, the paintbrush and then text. There you go. You got it. Paintbrush text. You can tell how often I use. Uh, oh, I just copied and pasted instead because that, uh, that was an, that was an intuitive know-how. Um, the can, the actually flying Dutchman, uh, Donger's regret. We're still gonna go with checkered. Uh, checkered pass is too good to, yeah. to miss out on. I feel. All right, 
these guys all down ways. And I'm gonna put the apne cells on here. All right, I'm gonna rotate those into position just like that. Okay. So we and the checkered past are riding up here and I'm I'm thinking that uh, I'm probably letting letting the slicer fly, right? Like you're probably the uh, the better hand on the stick, right? Um, you know, I think it's it's more about uh, you know, you let me fly when it's boring flying. Oh, okay. When it's, when it's exciting flying, you you grab the stick whether I'm better at it or not. All right. So that that <laughs> make, that makes sense. I, I, I can see that. I'm gonna pull out our airlock real quick, but I think uh, at this point Stokes is you know kind of leaning over your shoulder and maybe like pointing out all the all the structural flaws in this old bird because she's been out here a while like we're we're out on the dead belt this is where where they drag old ships out to die when they've lived past their usefulness but usually they just kind of weld them shut and just kick them out into uh into the depths of space because it's cheaper um and there's a super massive black hole in the system that is slowly dragging everything into its ever present um, ever hungry maw and uh i think this is this is one of these old um cm 23l camels right one of these old kind of thick as flies um uh, you know merchant freighters right i love it um and i think uh i'm asking you know you know rip where where do you think we should where do you think we should make entry like we can we can set our pry bar hatch on any one of these cards when we start um but you know where we where we start we're gonna have to go back to that airlock over and over and over again so i think hey rip yeah. Why, why don't you figure out where we're going to make entry here? Cause it's like, I think maybe in the, in the meat of her here. Like yeah. The, might... the, the, the center points where I always, where I always like to touch down. Okay. Well, let's hope she don't, she don't break too bad when we, when we launch that pry bar through, cause it's kind of almost like a harpoon, right? We're making, we're making dynamic entry into this old beat up, basically like rust bucket of a, uh, of a spaceship. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we got it. You think we got it? Yep. All right. Well, we don't have a scanner or nothing. We can't make sure that, uh, that our payday ain't in there, but, uh, I don't know. Say your prayers or something. So we're going to send this to the front and we're going to make entry. So you are going to be that dashing gentleman with the cowboy hat there. I'm the dashing. You, you know, no, you got fine. the better mustache, man. So maybe, maybe you should be mustache. I'm fine either way. Uh, okay. If you if you are used to being mustache, you stay I am with used mustache. To being mustache. Then you stay with mustache because okay, that way it mustache. just won't be confusing. Sounds good. Sounds good. Stokes will be mustache. Rip will be that gentleman with the cowboy hat. Um, I could have a I could have his glorious mustache underneath that that you know reflective dome. We don't know. I would be I would be kind of angry if you didn't at this yeah, point. Yeah, our mind cannon, you know. Um, <laughs> In our head cannon, the old hats club requires a. Anyway. A thick, luxurious mustache. Yep, that's it. All right. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get started here. I think you know the plaz torches go off. We make dynamic entry. We make our way to the aft lock on our uh, on our little our little jackdaw, and we kind of begin the slow and arduous process of like looking around in this this old tin rust bucket out here on the edge of the vasty unknown. You know. Uh, there's no, there's no sound in space, but like we can feel the, the thrum of the supermassive black hole, even from this distance, right under our boots. Um, I think I'm going to be pushing out, out here to the, uh, what is that to our right here? I'm, uh, first of all, going to have to make sure that, uh, that my air is going to hold out. So this is okay. the, the major mechanic. We're always going to check gas every time we make a move. That's okay. a D6. And as long as it's not a one, then nothing bad happens, right? Because if it's a one, well, then your failure range just got bigger. Okay. And then you want it to be anything but a two. But a two, okay. So I'm okay so far because I got a four. But I'm going to flip over this uh, this card here. Oh, oh, rip. Oh, rip, buddy. Yeah. What this you got? One, this one might be... Might be a cherry prize. So I find salvage because diamonds are salvage. Okay. And in this case, old Stokes found me an intact shuttle. Now you don't see many of these get left behind too often. Engine blown or otherwise. Yeah. It's haunted. Could be haunted. Could be just, you know, could be broken. Uh, I mean, it looks intact, but. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, it, 
it, it, it don't have a I don't have an engine compartment. So it'll be hard to get. You know what? Tell you what, we'll just remember where we found this because the move here is it's going to require a single spacewalk from our ship at the end. Somebody's going to have to walk in space to go and hitch this to our ship so we can drag it back to the space station. All right. Now, space spacewalks are, are hazardous, but it's okay because I'm a cowboy and I that's specialize right. in this kind. And that's that's because of the size of the the item that we found. No, that's that that's literally that's just this, how it works. That's this the... this prompt is an intact shuttle that requires a spacewalk. Spacewalk at the end. At the end. To, okay, cool. To hitch it up. Um, so that's T Rex asked, uh, "Is a standard deck of cards? Yeah, standard deck of cards plus standard Joker cards. to play." Mm -hmm. So somewhere in here is our Black Joker. And that black joker is our payday. It is the the big piece of salvage cool. that we think is going to be here. But it's your turn, so I'm going to need you to check gas and uh, figure out what we're where we're going. Yeah, I'm gonna um, let's see. Check gas D6. I got a mm -hmm. five. Um, and I was gonna. I think I think Rip's standard operating procedure is always go check the cockpit first. Go check the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, so we're, I'm going to go up to this. Uh, Man, how do I make a ping? This is this is the you level just of hold, hold click. Hold click. I'm gonna there you go. go. I'm gonna go up to this side. All right. Uh, and do I do I flip this? Yeah, flip that card What's, after. Is there you already checked? Yes. Is so there a right, command for that? <laughs> there is. So I'm gonna right click, and it's the second from the top. Flip card. Cool. Uh oh. All right. So spades are bad news, bud. Ace of spades, bad news in the. This is why you always check the cockpit first. That's that's it, because you know it's always full of bad news. That's right. All right. So bad news for you. I'm looking in in your oracle book right now. You got gremlins. That's what we call it when a machine goes on the fritz, and these are mighty big gremlins. Okay. This looks like deliberate sabotage from where I'm sitting. I'm going to need you to roll a d6 unless you think that you might be spending gear here to. I, I am sure going to spend things. gear here. Okay. Um, so is that just me? I'm going to I'm going to use one of the. Yep. Grab one of your red boxes there and drag it on down to the token pit. We'll find we'll find more later, or we'll buy more later. Either way. Just grab, grab one of these little. I know. I'm there. trying to. Um... It's not letting you. It was a second ago, so this is this is this is me not knowing how to use roll twenty more than it is anything else. I can move it for you if you want. Yeah, go ahead and move it down for me. All right, sounds good. All right, so spending a gear, which means that you can roll two d six, and you'll take the higher roll. All right. I got two fives, so I mean, you got two fives. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, five ain't bad. That's a yeah. that's a mixed success. Okay. So it's a real rat's nest in there, Rip, um, and it's going to take a while. So you're either going to need to check your gas again, or you're going to need to spend another gear as you are cutting through the snarl of wires and all kinds of nasty stuff is this, what do you think this is? This is probably like central nav computer or something coming back online and is slowly ticking down to like where it throws us into hyperspace. Yeah. Something. I like that. Like it's put us on a clock and if we don't stop it, it's going to move us like directly towards the black hole. It's not <laughs> just uh it's, it's not just, Hey, uh, it's gonna We're going to take you home. <laughs> oh no. It's, this is, this is, we're going to take you, uh, uh, into the heart of the black hole. So we're, we're going, we don't need eyes. Uh, I got a four. So I checked my okay. gas and got a four. Okay. Yeah. You're fine. Right. So like coming over the radio, like, are you, are you letting me know that this is happening? Or yeah. I was like, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, we got, we got a problem. Hold on just one second. And then you just hear like, uh, me just like <laughs> let out, a, let, let out a long string of cusses. You hear like, oh, yeah. you see electronic sparks, like throw back down, like the, the light of them throw back down the hallway. Um, <laughs> Pop You're back up. me with a whole lot of confidence down there, Rick. It's uh, no, it's fine. Now it's fine. I got it. I got it. I got the. I got the nav computer shut off. It's fine. We're not going anywhere. Nav computer was on. Look, um, you know, um, not, not until I turned on the power, but you All know, right. um, then it was. You and me, Rip. We've been working together for a little while. I feel like we should probably work on our communication a little bit. Well, you know, um, <laughs> can't you breaking up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, meanwhile, I'm going to see if I can keep the keep the good times running. Uh, I'm going to actually flash my glow back here just to just uh, this, this back here uh, just to see if there's anything there. I'm going to spend my glow, which means at this point I'm turning my my Omni flash this big, basically like a security guard's flashlight on steroids, um, you know, down one of these corridors and it's just instant sunrise. I'm going to see what's over here. OK, so clubs are barriers, which means that 
if we uh, if we step on that card, we have to navigate a barrier, and it's either going to be one of those things where because we check gas when we move, right? Okay. Um, it's either going to dump us back in the module that we started in at the worst, and we'll check gas again, or it's going to allow us to pass once, or we navigate it with no problems. But some of these some of these barriers are pretty bad. Like you okay. know, it's open to space or it's full of bodies or, you, and you know, and you could of... get trapped down the other side of it theoretically, which exactly. Means... And away from your airlock. Right. And that's basically the worst, right? So. But I'm actually going to transit to this module over here. I'm going to check my gas real quick, just to make sure I'm not gasping yet. And we're okay. We're okay. See, that's the thing about oxygen out here on the dead belt. You're fine until you're not. Yeah. Two hearts though. I'm finding all the red rip. You need to, uh, you need to just find red cards. It's a lot easier. <laughs> All right. So, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a hearts represent? So hearts are supply. Supply is um, how you get some of these, these dots uh, in your grit gear uh, and uh, mostly just your grit and gear and gas, right? Uh, so as you start running out of air, as you're running low on luck, as your tool belt's getting empty, these are places where you might be able to find stuff that was left over uh, to kind of add to your... Um, What's the word? Um, toolbox, right? Okay. Um, in this case, it's good times. So, so this is some evidence that this place was once someone's home. Okay. I, I think as I'm making my way through here, like it's um, maybe like the crew mess, right? Uh, and it's got like the, the ship's name stenciled on one wall. Um, there's like photographs or, uh, or hollows or something that are, uh, that are hung up. Um, this is the part of the ship that, that feels kind of like homey. Okay. Uh, there's some evidence of like a celebration here. Um, <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, happy birthday. The, start, start. Now we're top. exactly like this was, this was at one point somebody's home out here in the vasty unknown. And here we are kind of picking over the carcasses. Yeah. So I'm going to see whether or not that makes me feel better that this was somebody's home or if I am too focused on the job. So I'm going to roll the, uh, the supply move. And on a six, I'm going to gain two grit which I can carry along with me. So when we start using grit, we can, uh, we can bring it back to the ship as load or we can pass it among ourselves or however okay. on a four to five, I'll get one on a one to three. That place has nothing left for us. Look, we're doing the job, man. That's a one. <laughs> I, I don't have time for birthday parties. I don't even like it here. Like, uh, and I think really it's that, that feeling that like, this is, this is somebody's home but it's also dead, right? Like this is, uh, this is one of those places where no matter how many good times it was, it didn't save nobody. Love so it. How about you rip? Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of flank out on this other side. Now that we've got the, the, um, the gremlins under control, we're going to see good. what's going on. It's good, man. What's going on here. Oh, there we Ooh. go. There Ooh. we go. All right. Finding some red. That's going to make my spacewalk fun later because I get to draw from the same deck that we are finding all the red cards in. And I'm going to hope <laughs> that there are red cards in it still. All right. Ace of Diamonds. This is the good stuff. I think you found the big wigs quarters. It's a shame you're going to have to wing it on back to the core to get what it's worth, but there are less refined tastes out here. What do you think? What do you think you found in like the captain's quarters? Um, I think we found, you know, um, we found a case of just really old, uh, high quality whiskey. Um, the captain Ooh. had been stolen, stolen away okay. uh, for, for a celebration that never came. Oh man. It's probably for that birthday party. Probably for that birthday party. <laughs> yeah, before everybody died. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's, that's salvage. You can actually, uh, this is a one load, uh, piece of salvage. Okay. Which means that you can add it to your, uh, add it to your character sheet here. Take it with you, or you can leave it there, and we can come back for it once we find uh, other prizes. Just kind of cleaning up the ship. Yeah. But you got you got three loads, so you know you got two to spare after you pick that up. There we go. Um, throw it in the carry on. Yeah. Cool, and do I need to flash my glow at the beginning, or can I do it any? Point no, you can do it at the end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and flash my glow out on this uh, this last one over here. All right. Uh, we're gonna go. We'll go ahead and flip that. See if we need to. Oh, we got some more supply over there. All right. Well, we can go over and investigate that supply in a, in a minute, but just knowing the um, just knowing the suit, you know, that's not that's not bad news up there. Yeah. That's good. All right. Cool. Well, my turn is going to be transiting back to that shuttle bay. I'm going to check my gas real quick. 
Oh no, it begins. All right. I think at this point I'm looking down and, you know, we've been here maybe 15 minutes or so, but already the gauge is starting to drop. I'm like, Hey, rip, we got to find that payday brother. Uh, I mean, I found, I found some, some whiskey, but yeah, not, I don't, you know, not, not well, what why, we're looking for. Why the for. hell didn't you say so? I'm saying we, so now. We we could maybe stay a little while longer. You think there's more? <laughs> I mean, there's a couple bottles in here, but yeah, I think I think you know there's some more. There's looks like there's some some other good stuff uh, a little bit further down also too. Um, okay. But you know we got to check aft also still. All right, that's that's fair. Um, so you've got load. You you can transit into the into the airlock and make the airlock move if you want to put your load away and kind of empty your hands before you get to the next parts of the ship. Um, or you can push on. I've got three load. We're fine. We've got four cards and three in okay. and, and four load between the two of us. I think we'll, sure. If if we find anything too big, then we're we're gonna it's gonna be too big by far either way. Well, yeah, it'll be a relay race at that point. Right. And so, All right. cool. Uh, uh, so check I'm, your gas. I'm gonna move back. Check my gas. Oh, starts for me also. Uh oh. Uh oh. That was a one. Okay. Um. But no, I do love, I love, I love oxygen doesn't matter. And like some chat, chat commented on it, Faded Quill brought it up. Um, like even in Through the Void, like there's no time for oxygen rules. It's like, yeah, when players roll badly or when you need to move them along, oxygen starts to matter. If they're, if they're yep. just hanging out, massively exerting themselves, or if they roll really badly, oxygen will tick down, right? Uh, <laughs> so, so all these... All- all these little vignettes that we're that we're moving through that these cards are calling out, yeah. um, like every one of them is kind of vaguely open ended, and so like the way that you're kind of in the fiction interacting with them yeah. as uh, like it can be one of these things where like you're here wandering the halls of this this bird for a while, and you kind of lose track of time, and you look down at your O2, and you're like, oh no, oh man, I got to get out of here, yeah. or like you're focused on the job, and oh those gremlins they just took so damn long, and I couldn't. I couldn't find a workaround and now all of a sudden I'm at the red line. And so, yeah, I, I, I feel that the, the riding the disaster wave and trying to yeah. uh, make enough money to, cause at the end here, we're going to have to refill these things. Yep. And that that's not free. Oh, okay. Very cool. Good to know. So, um, okay. I'm going to move into the airlock as well. And then we'll push down South after I check gas here. Okay, we're all right. We're all right. Arresting the uh, the forward momentum of the disaster wave. There we go. I'll follow your lead, Rip. All right. Uh, move down. Uh, check gas. We're good. Flip the card. Three clubs. Oh, barrier. Bur- the worst place for a barrier to be. <laughs> you know, I find that it happens more often than you'd expect. All right. So this is leaking containment. Okay. That pipe leads to the reaction mass vessel, don't it? The way it's weeping and your Geiger keeps making increasingly frantic noises, it's probably best you don't linger here. So as we're kind of like walking down the central spine, and you gotta you gotta imagine that camels are basically like a giant fusion engine with like some clamps that are holding on to all these cargo pods and yeah. bays and everything. And we're just right along the central spine and it's just leaking something that looks unhealthy. And uh, at this point, we're going to make the barrier move. You're going to roll a D6. Okay. Um, and we'll see whether or not we can even navigate this. Yeah, let me. I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit more gear, I think, here, too. Spend some gear? Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, and you know what? I So I can't move. I couldn't move the last two of these gear. I can move the first two of these gear. I'm going to go ahead and move the one I can move. I don't know oh, what it weird. was about that. that the, the, and uh, oh, maybe there's just a spot I can't. There's parts on the red that I can and can't grab. That's <laughs> what well. it looks like for some of those. Uh, either way, uh, we got it. Um, huh. uh, so I'm gonna roll two two d six. You know, I pull out pull out some. Uh, I pull out just a big a big uh, thing of Yale space duct tape to try to flexo see tape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, and I got a six on one of those. All right, man. All right, cool. So you successfully navigate the barrier. We can move on, and it's gonna remain clear for any future passage. Cool. Um, I think from down the hallway, like Stokes is like, you good? Yeah. Uh, I had to break out the, you know, the flexo tape, but, um, yeah. uh, the right. radiation shouldn't bother you much now. That flexo tape made a lead. <laughs> yeah. 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 The lead, lead line flexo tape. It's, you know, have you not heard about this? No, man. <laughs> like I was, 
I was getting ready to walk in space. Nah. <laughs> nah, no, we're fine. Not yet. See that? See that, Rip? That's why I bring you along on these things. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, all right. We're getting rarefied down here. If there's a payday on this bird, we better find it quick. Well, usually, usually there's less on the app than there is on the four. Well, I don't know. They got all the bits and workings back here, right? Well, yeah. All right. Now pick your pony. Where, where, where are you going from here? Uh, we're going to move down to the middle. Okay. Uh, check here. We're good. We've got a three. Cool. Flip. Oh, that's another barrier, man. Okay. So apparently that, uh, that leaking containment, it overrode the, uh, the safeties down here. And this whole module is just a big old testament to deferred maintenance. Like you step wrong and this whole thing is coming apart. Um, so this is one of those things where like, if this goes badly, like you might end up getting dumped into space here. Okay. Um, so look, this is another, another barrier move. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to gear it up again. Um, hold what? on your gear, hold on your gear. I'm going to, I'm going to do, oh. I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do one of the co-op moves here. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to see if I can talk you through this. Okay. It's like, again, Stokes is a, is a, is a master of being in space, which means that there's that whole lead up to going out into space. He's pretty good at that too. And he's like over the comm, he's like, all right. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that there's a green bar. It looks a little bit like a T-bone steak and you're going to reach out and you're going to grab onto that. And I'm going to check gas and you're going to roll two dice and you cannot get less than a four or five. Okay. I got another six on this one. All right, cool. All right. I got so, it here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm pulling it down or pushing it up. You're going to push it up and you're going to rotate it clockwise while you do it. All right. So the, the normal way then. Yeah, the normal way, exactly. Right. So as uh, as it clunks into position and everything, like I think at that point, like you can you can feel the seals that uh, like it's mostly flex tape back here at this point, right? But you just vented out all the all the bad news, and uh, now we can make our way through. I'm gonna follow you. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna break left here, and you're gonna break right. That sounds good. All right. Getting a little bit toward the red line here, so we're all right. We're all right. Ain't gonna die here. I got plenty. You got good. You good. Yep. All right. Cool. You may. We may need to buddy breathe on the way back. It'll be fine. That's all right. Won't, won't be the first time. <laughs> That's right. All right. Cool. So you found some salvage. I like that. All right. So what is that? Eight. Oh man, nice. That's a T-76. Every belter who was ever a kid knows what that is. That's the T-76 cargo loader. It's a mech suit. That one's been stripped for parts. But that frame is still worth a mint if you can lug it out. So that's load eight. Oh, all right. Now you can spend a gear to split the frame into manageable chunks if you can't move it all in one go. Okay. Um uh you know stokes handles the books more so is that is that a is is that an ideal thing to do like you always want to make it you always want to make it out with a full load i'm going to imagine so we're when anytime we are in the airlock we can stash any load that we have on us and kind okay. of empty our hands and basically just like get it up into our hold okay and then we can continue we could continue working through it right okay um, well, both of these barriers are passable so even if i got to make a couple tricks trips i think we'll be okay so. as long as you got the air man yeah um, as long as you got the air. Yeah, I'll uh, let's see what's on the other side. Um, okay, but I'll I'll spend the gear. Do I need to check gas when I nope, do this? You don't. Okay, just okay. We'll break it up into manageable chunks. Okay, so you you come over the comm and, and are like excited about this thing? Do you think? Oh yeah, I was like, uh, and I say the name of the thing. Um, the, the, you found a T seven X? Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, motor's gone. Uh, you know, mostly just the frame left. Um, but like. Uh, these arms are going to look real cool hanging on the wall until we sell them to somebody. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna leave you to that. Like, yeah. I, I imagine Rip as a slicer, like, the the idea of getting your hands dirty on, like, a, like a mech suit is probably up there on. Yeah, like, like, you know that before I chop it up, I'm in there, like, pretending oh, yeah. like it still, still, you know, fully works. <laughs> Doing your best Ripley impression. Yep. All right. Oh, man. You know what that means? 
That means we came down square we on came the down on the pail. I was like, by the time we were back here and hadn't hit it, I was like, I'm going to have destroyed that pail. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I hit bad news and I might be out of air here very shortly, but I think I've got a workaround, so it'll be all right. I'm just going to have to yeehaw it. So let's see what the bad news is. Ten of spades picked over. Turns out we're not the first mouse in this house, Rip. <laughs> Looks like someone's been shuffling through the cast-offs here, and they might have claimed the juiciest morsels already. Uh -oh. Let's see. Let's see. I got a roll here, but I still got plenty of grit, so we're going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and roll D6. Okay. The choice bits are still here, at least. Any additional salvage would mean any that we haven't uncovered which we've uncovered the entire ship. So if this was the perfect time to find this card, right. would have been half value rounded down. Okay. But we found all the salvage already, even though we did crush our payday. We found too many paydays in, we had a, uh, we had a um, shuttle and a mech suit. So it's pretty, pretty rich, rich find anyway. Cool. All right, Rip, there's plenty more. There's plenty more here. We're fine. Um, I think I'm going to have to take a walk in space if I'm going to get back to this airlock and have enough air to hitch up that that shuttle though. So all right, you, you okay over there? Yeah, I'm. 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 Just, I've. I've got a. I've got you know these arms taken off. Like I'll have to come back for the external servo motors. But uh, okay. you know, like we, we we've got you know I'm I'm loaded up right now. Tell you what, I'll race you to the airlock and then I'll hold it open for you. And as much as that's of that stuff as you can get, we will. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get it working. We'll be all right. We're gonna be all right. And, and rolling six when we check for gas does nothing, right? We're just yeah. avoiding, we're just all, avoiding always, bad numbers. Always a roll above wherever your marker is, right. right? So if it's showing two, you want anything above a two. If it's showing five, like me, I want anything above a five. Gotcha. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Okay. So at this point, I am gonna make the spacewalk move. Now I can spacewalk between any two um modules i can draw a line between right okay so the idea is a good simple mechanic yep yeah. so where's my ruler there we go so i'm just gonna see if i can slingshot my way right back to where that airlock module Love is it. so this is how this works and it's gonna get scary so be here with me okay right so i'm gonna move myself into space i think stokes is going over toward the uh to the it was at the port side airlock and he just hammers the button and he's like, all right, pressure going out. <laughs> and I think it's just over the comm. Yeah. He's just going to space himself. And I'm just watching, I'm watching through one of the holes in this mostly falling apart. Uh, oh yeah. No, there's sucker holes all over the place. You probably see like, I can go Stokes. <laughs> you take care, buddy. Um, all right. So when I spacewalk, I roll a D six, just like most of these moves, they start with a D six, but it gets weirder. So, Please be a six. Oh, that's a five. Okay. So I'm going to draw one card from the unused portion of my deck. Okay. Which I have just shuffled. And if it's red, I can bridge the gap, but it's going to cost me something, which means I use a resource. Okay. If it's black, I have to check gas. And there's and nothing I could have done to help you with that role. Not yet. No. Okay. Um, eventually you'll be able to, to help me out in that. Like um, you can, you know, pay for my burial. Okay, I can fly over, pick up your body, and take it home. <laughs> That's about it, man. All right, what is it? Please be red. Please be red. Please be red. Oh, it's black. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so... I need to draw... Okay, so I'm going to check gas again on my turn, but right now it's taking me longer than I want it to. Okay. Um, and I'm going to spend a resource. Basically, at this point, I am trusting my grit and instincts to carry me across the gap without dying. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So it is your turn, my friend. Check ass and transit. Uh, still fine. Still fine? Good. Yep. Good. One of us will make it out today. Navi's over here cackling at me because I always die in space. I always, <laughs> I always do this. Um, like we, we were recording a, uh, an actual play the other day, um, you know, just throw up on YouTube or on the Kickstarter and everything. And we miraculously, I survived two whole ships. Oh yeah. So she, she plays, she plays very, very calmly and very sedately and very conservatively. And she like wins. 
I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're, look, you're looking for right. that quick payday. You know? That's it, man. All right. So there's that again. I'm going to decrement my gas. Getting pretty rarefied over here. I'm going to roll spacewalk. You got this. I've seen, I've seen your needle lower. Yep. Uh, well, I just, okay. So because I'm the cowboy, it doesn't matter how many black cards I'm carrying. As long as I get one red before I'm dead, it's going to be okay. Okay. And this one's going to be red. So it's no big deal. Right. Right. There it is. Luck be a lady tonight. Okay. So I come through Stokes, you know, manages to, I guess, dog paddle my way toward, uh, I'm going to spend that other grit, dog paddle my way toward that airlock and, um, you know, basically put myself in a small ballistic spin toward the, toward the airlock. Got banged up and bruised up, but in through that airlock. And I'm like, Hrip! <laughs> you, uh, you good? <laughs> yeah. How are things That's outside? It was a little cold. <laughs> All right. So you made it to the airlock. Yep. Now we're going to make the airlock move, right? Um, I'm going to pay grit on your behalf, or not grit, uh, gear on your behalf, because I know you're running low. And I'm going to let you roll two dice here when we make the airlock move. And what is the airlock move? So the airlock move, I'm going to read it to you real quick. Do, 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 do. All right. The airlock move. So there's going to come a time when your hands are full and the gas isn't low enough yet to give you cause for concern. There's probably more booty on that bird to make profit on, but I'm almost out of air. So when you return to the airlock, roll a D6. And then we're going to uh, see how easy a time we have of getting all of our ill-gotten booty. All well, here's the question. If, if you wait here, is there any reason for me to not run down and pick up three more load from that? Absolutely not. Okay. There is no reason for that because you got plenty of air. Where am I? Where am I putting these? Just out here on the... Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna drop them in our cargo bay up here. Where? Uh, perfect. And just drop them in the first three there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So roll me that d6, and we'll see how easy it is to get this all stored because we might end up, uh, you know, having nothing parts in the airlock burn out. We might have uh, to spend some gear to rig up a storage solution. Cool. It might take some time. Uh, and I'm, I'm rolling one or two. One. Oh no, you have two because I gave you a gear. Right. That's what I thought. Oh, we got a six on that. You got a six? Oh, yeah, perfect. So able to steal what you got, right back to work. All right. I'm going to run down and pick up a little bit more. You just rest easy here. All right. Well, you know, don't take it easy on me or nothing. I... <laughs> just stay here. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> I don't need you running out of oxygen halfway down. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. All right. That was that was all we're good. We're going to load back up. All right. So by my count, there are still three on there. That is correct. All right. All right. We, that was no, no, no loss on there. So we're no loss on there. Okay. Let's, uh, I'll spend another, I'll spend my last gear here and I'll give you two dice to roll for the airlock move. Uh, well, good thing we spent one. Cause one of those was a one. The other one was a five. There it is. All right. So we gotta, we gotta pick something bad that happens. Um, so what do we think happens? Do we think that, uh, one of the nothing parts in the airlock burns out and it's going to take a cred to fix when we get back to the station? Do we think that, uh, you, we need to check gas here. Do we think that the airlock gives a lurch and tears away from the ship and now we're done for the day? Do we both have to check gas? If we check yeah, gas? we're both going to have to check gas. Um, let's not check gas. Uh, let's, I'd say, so load wise, what, what is like, what is a, what is a, what is a cargo slot go for? A cargo slot uh -huh. is one cred. Yeah, let's 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 have something get torqued and spend a cred. Just get torqued and spend a cred. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. So I'm just gonna put one marker on our upkeep for this mission because for this mission functionally, our upkeep is gonna be three. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run down there and pick up those last three. All right, man. Now here's my question. Like I know I know you've been taking it easy on me and everything, but do you think I should get that shuttle? I mean, that shuttle is a, that's a, it's a good, it's going to be a pretty penny. Okay. Tell you what, while you're doing that, I'm going to see if I can survive this. If I don't make it back, 
I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right. So as long as it's just this one, because at this point, checking gas again, I die here if this isn't a red card or a six that I'm about to roll because I still have to roll my spacewalk. Well, that's a two. I'm going to spend a grit to make it a four or five, and it comes down to this thing. Now, you might be wealthy here because you're coming back not having to pay my debts or my upkeep, but I might be done here. Do you feel lucky? I mean, not about whether I feel lucky or not. About whether you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so Stoke goes wheeling off into the hungry void trying to hitch up that uh that shuttle but uh yeah i think you made what is that uh, eight grid on that uh on that excursion yep <laughs> sometimes that's, that's how it goes they don't call it that everybody gets alive and you know gets a pony belt <laughs> That belt's only two two systems over. We should go there sometime. <laughs> so once you find my my cold blue corpse, <laughs> you'll be like, it's all right, Stokes. We're going to the everybody's alive and gets a pony belt. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh what are the normal rules for spacewalking? The normal rules for spacewalking. Ah, you're gonna you're gonna go and be uh I mean be brave. Here's the question, you know. Do do you we get real wealthy? Do here. we both die on this belt or do, do I, I just get real wealthy? All right. So when you spacewalk, you are going to roll a D6. Okay. Okay. And I'll tell you what happens after that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, but I need to get over to that shuttle to do this first, right? Yep. All right. All right. We're good on that. All right. So I'm going to roll a D6. Uh, anything I can do to, to boost this D6? Uh, you can spend your last gear if you want to boost that D6. My glow was already spent. Uh, yeah, I'm going to spend my last gear. Sounds good. Uh, so I got a five and a four. Okay. So on a five, you're going to draw one card from the unused portion of your deck. I can do that for you if you'd like. Uh, sure. Do, 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 shuffle. All right. So here is your card, sir. It is red, <laughs> which means you can bridge the gap, but it's going to cost you something. So you need to use a resource, a grit, gear, or check gas. Uh, I'm going to consider use, how you use it to get across. I'm going to use a grit because I still got some <clears throat> of the some of the. Sounds those. good. Sounds good. So using your grit and moxie, you come out there, and uh, and you link up that shuttle, and you hook it up to the checkered past, which is now yours by right. Yeah. Uh, used to be co-owner. Yeah, um, used to be co-owner, but now you're sole proprietor. How yeah. about that coming up in the world? Um, and at that point, like you guys, you are, you are set up with, that's another eight cred. Hang on. Make sure that that's right. Do, 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 do. Are y'all going to have a, are y'all, are y'all going to have a leaderboard where people can get, get a, can oh, absolutely. list the, their highest of scores. So not only their highest scores, but like once they, uh, once they buy out their debt, cause the, the object of the game is to, to make enough. Cause each of these little debt circles is actually 10 cred. Okay. Right? Uh, so when you get back, you can buy out your debt and then, um, you can buy investments to first of all, defray your upkeep, but also when you hit that, that last part there, um, you have enough to finance your dream, which is your exit from the belt. Going so to like the pony, going to pony belt. That's that's to the pony belt, right? Where everybody gets a pony. Um, everybody's got their own particular like uh, thing that they're trying to do to get out of the belt. Like the void rat just wants to get out of the belt, but like the slicer, like you need to fund your masterpiece, right? Right. Um, so after all, all of that, like then they're gonna try and get you one more time. Then there will be like black contracts, uh, these these um, more narratively uh, you know laid out. All the modules are best spoke, and it's got a got its own particular layout and uh, its own particular dangers and that's like the true end game where your your belter is super hardened and you're very canny and like you've been lucky this far and it's my last chance to try and kill them love it uh, <laughs> all right so your intact shuttle is six more cred which you uh 
can just put straight into your credit account up here if you want. Oh, I guess that's true. Because you don't have to load that into the cargo bay because it's a shuttle that you're towing behind you. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think about that. <clears throat> yep. So when you get back, when you get back to Brinkley or Hubwell or Reachback or any of these, these stations out here on the belt, like, do you tell anybody what happened to me? Do what? Do you I mean, tell yeah, anybody we, what? We, we, hold a, we hold a grand service. You really? Yeah. Outstanding. Okay. Well, let's see if the bank compounds your interest while you're holding your grand service. They don't. Turns out the loan is holding steady. You know, they don't send any guys after you saying, uh, by the way, you uh, need to make your payments or anything like that. Um, but they they do charge you three in upkeep right off the top just to keep the, uh, keep the ship roll. I'm sorry. I don't eat or need a place to stay anymore. So it's only two upkeep for you now. Aha, nice. The rich get richer. Um, so I'm going to pay two upkeep. Um, and uh, I, I think I do have enough to pay off. Now, so let's let's yeah. talk about. I know because I have to spend money to to fix things too, right? Right, because you're you're running on empty at this point, right? Right. Because like if you if you went out now, you'd still be at a uh, a decrement of four or better to to not decrement your oxygen. All right, so we have ways to spend creds. We've got you know goods and services and things like that. So spare. Oh. bits that come in packages of three. So any of those little, those little boxes, you can buy three little red boxes for one cred. Okay. And you can, you know, spend that's, that's getting three air. That's getting, you know, three grit or a gear and a grit and a glow or anything like okay. that. So you'd, you'd spend that. You also, uh, there's all kinds of fun equipment that you can bring out there. Anytime you have like some kind of problem out on the boat, there's probably a piece of equipment that, that solves it. Whether that be, you know, dying of asphyxiation, we got dead man cylinders and emergency scrubbers and egress kits and things like that that'll help you out with that. Um, crushing your payday, like that's uh, that's one of those things that like a scanner is helpful for. Okay. So we're trying to nickel and dime you every every, every step of the way because the bank wants to win is what it is. Cool. Awesome. So you're always up against it. I love it. But that's dead belt. What'd you think, Tony? I loved it. It was great. Uh, had you survived, I would have been happy to run back out. Um, I know, <laughs> I know, character creation is quick, but uh, I think that's a that's a good a good place to stop. Um, uh, we can, you know, we can always hop back on. Uh, sure. Knowing how quick this plays, if you want to hop back on some other time in the campaign, I'm happy to happy Heck to yeah. do another one of these. Spin, spin another one of these up real quick. Uh, Should I grab Navi? Uh, yeah, go ahead and grab Navi. All right, cool. Hey, Navi. <laughs> Hi. Nice. How's it she going? She was here the whole time. It's studio magic. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> see if I can use some moving some stuff around, get y'all both in frame a little bit better. There we go. Awesome. All right. Let's do our reaction roll. Reaction roll is a live stream inside of a live stream. It's our chance to sit down with the creator of a game that we just played or creators in this situation and talk about what it's like to play that game. Today, we are sitting down and talking about Dead Belt, a solo co-op or rivalry rpg for space cowboys uh picking uh through and scavenging the leftovers of ships in the dead belt uh, i just finished playing uh with sean who is one of the designers and we are going to talk to sean and navi the co-designers uh, of this game from a couple of drakes the actual couple of drakes yeah. uh the that make this couple uh i gotta know because i think it's what everybody wonders um, and I don't, if it's the answer is no, I don't need to know any more of the details in that, but is Drake your all's actual last name? Yes. Yeah, I never, I is. never know. I never know. Yeah. And I never, until uh, this moment, I didn't want to ask, but, uh, no, it's, it, it's on my birth certificate and everything. <laughs> Drake's of Drake's of Drake's of Drake's. We're all Drake's here. We're all Drake's here. A whole flock of Drake's. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a why clutch, don't, actually, it's yeah. the, uh, the collective now, uh, why don't you tell, uh, little people a little bit about, uh, who y'all are, what y'all do and Navi, I know, I know Sean already answered this question, but why don't you tell us about, uh, um, uh, dead belt. Oh, oh my God. What did you say about it? Nope. That doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> pretend like you were, you were not I'm here. A, I'm going to retread old ground. My memory is this long. Um, so yeah, no, De uh, Dead Belt is a solo and co-op game for people who don't typically like solo games is kind of how I put it. <laughs> um, I, uh, 
it's a lot of solo games are very either um, journaling, which we also have journaling games, love them, um, and then or they are very um, narrative first, where you kind of have to create your own story as you go, and then the oracles and dice they support that, but you're still doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, this was really um, a game that's where you can take your friends who don't know role play. They just, there's also like board games. Uh, you can get them to come play with you because it kind of bridges that gap. And we, yeah. we've had a lot of people mention that like that's that's how they rope their friends into role playing with them. <laughs> so um, this is the this is like the the perfect game for people who don't want to do a lot of their own story building. And still play a fun solo game, and yeah. you can still, you know, you can still role play, and like, uh, like you guys were just doing, where um, you're, you're still building character, and you have rapport, and you're having fun. But you could also just read exactly what's on the on on the pages, and still have a really good time because the prompts are written to be kind of fun to interact with, and um, witty and interesting. So even if you're just quietly playing by yourself. Um, it's an enjoyable game. I love yeah. it. There, it's got a lot more resource management function to it uh, than than any other solo optional RPG that I've played. Right? Like um, there is. You guys have done it because we talk about it a lot on stream that that desire to bridge like uh, at, rules as written. Like Dungeons and Dragons uh, is actually far more of a tactical game than most mm -hmm. people play it. Um, there's a lot of a lot of rules for grid work and other stuff like that, and it. It actually really, if you play it rules as written with tactical combat, it falls on the board game side of the spectrum in a lot of a lot of ways. Um, there's <laughs> other games that kind of really are bu built as board games, but play more on the RPG side of things. Um, and so it's always fun to me to see kind of games like this that really do try to try to span that, especially solo to two player. I don't, I buy solo games like as artifacts. I don't play them because I don't do a lot of like I, I don't do a lot of the journaling aspects of it, but I could definitely see like sitting down and playing this, especially the two player uh, like version with of it, um, like with, you know, my kids, um, you know, just, mm -hmm. um, you know, sitting my down when we've got a couple minutes after game. school, like, you know, like I, it, it's a really, really fun take on it. Um, and there is a lot of tactical like how when do i deploy this right like when do mm -hmm. i choose to use this how do i choose to use this um and and the the cards couldn't have ended up better in this game just to kind of highlight some of the the choices that you've got to make in that uh we probably shouldn't have had you go get the especially since i was able to get it we probably should not have had you go get that show <laughs> you know what that's where the role playing comes in though because when I, in, in in my mind stokes is a cowboy stokes right. is an adrenaline junkie he lives to push it like it would have been it would have been smart like Sean actually thought like, man, I'm dead here. Like there's right. No I was way. like, you gotta roll a six or draw yeah. a red card. And it's hard, but, but there's a 50 50 chance it doesn't yeah. feel like a big risk. No, but <laughs> Stokes, right? Stokes is thinking to himself, Man, I have done this particular dance in space so many times. I am beyond I'm bulletproof here. Right. right? Like I'm at the red line, but that's where I live my life, man. Right. And so Stokes went for a swim. Stokes didn't come on back. Like that's oh, I was wondering this whole time what that seven of hearts was because I don't have them all no, memorized. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, but if there's air over there, you could have went and got the air. But no, you couldn't no. have. It was no. over. <laughs> uh <laughs> but later on, later on, you get a spares bank. You mm -hmm. get a spares bank on your ship and you get to, you know, fill it with extra stuff. And so when anytime you're in the in the airlock, you can, you know, charge up your air real quick and be like, nope, there's more out there. I'm gonna get more. Mm -hmm. um, well, it yeah. And the, the, the economics of the game, like the resource management side of the game is very sharp. Like it's, it's very obviously stacked against like there's, there's, there are ways that you can support yourself, but all those things are an investment and you're going to be choosing to not do something else, especially early yeah. on in the game. Um, and you could get really far into it and then all of a sudden just wipe. And in honesty, oh, yeah. the co-op one feels more feels a little bit more enjoyable because you almost have a save with a buddy where it's like a little bit yeah if i like, die you leave and just go hire my next character exactly oh yeah no, stokes too is there is there on brinkley waiting for you. he's like yeah. hey i think you uh you used to work with my brother right <laughs> you don't happen to have like a ship with like a bed or uh, um if if any of you are watching right now have questions feel free toss them in the chat otherwise i'm going to ask some questions I uh, would love to hear from you, but, but um, uh, Cassie Mothwin says, uh, absolutely love the uh, the solo version of the game. They've enjoyed um, uh, playing it. They all, they also figured it was a pen name, so they were glad I asked. Uh, and then uh, I, I'm a T-Rex. Uh, Amanda says, sounds like a great date night game. 
Oh, yeah. Um and so um you mentioned y'all have y'all have done a couple of these like two player games. This one has been your favorite so far. Um was that so that you like specifically so that y'all could play together? Was this like solving a problem for y'all? Like I know y'all design other stuff like that, but that like quarter blades and other things that have high social yeah. interaction, you've got a GM, you, like you need a group of players to play those. This game, either of you or both of you can play it together. I think right. we're, we're weirdly into um, co-op strategy games. Uh, we have a a wealth of like overcooked and played up and moving up and all those ridiculous uh, co-op movies that usually like, uh, they, they call them um, marriage wreckers yeah. or <laughs> home wreckers because everybody <laughs> plays and gets divorced. We love those. Um, so co-op games are, are something that, that's what we do with our, our free time um, is, is always co-op games. Y'all have free Digital time? Date night. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. No, but when we when we carve out like a couple a couple of hours for ourselves after the kids go to sleep and you know dinner's all put away and everything and like after we've decided you know, what the what the next game that we're working on we can put that down for a minute then we uh, yeah we do digital date night and then we do analog date night so yeah this was like we started off um, we started off with games like uh, like. Um, murderous ghosts mm -hmm. or um we were playing gloom there for a while that two-player card game that was, uh, that was a lot of fun um and so there was always always like a what was it? So good. it is there was always a gap there where we're like okay so what are we playing next um uh, well we could probably find some way to hack this to just be you and me and the guy guys we play with the guys on friday but like it's tuesday <laughs> and they probably aren't gonna be so yeah, that's it's definitely solving a problem for us. Awesome. Um, well, we got some good questions coming in from the chat. Let's let's cool. hop to some of those. But uh, Cassie asked a great one off the top. Uh, how did the idea for this game specifically come about? And, and obviously, it deals a lot with late stage capitalism. But why space? <laughs> why space? Um, that's that's a really good question. I um, am always trying to kind of stay apprised with what's what's cool and shaken in the um, in the TTRPG realm. Um, I, I read really broadly, and I stumbled on the Carta SRD uh, by Peachtree, Peachtree, Peach Garden. I can't off the top of my head. Lord, I'm so sorry. Um, but I found the Carta SRD. I read it, and it was kind of cool. And at the time, I happened to be like my zone out game was a game called Hard Ship, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Hard okay. Hard Space Hard. Hard Hard Space Hard. Um, and. Uh, you're basically cutting apart old ships and sorting them into the recycling bins. And it's a lot more fun than it sounds. Um, but it's similarly like late stage capitalism, disaster capitalism in space because they transported you into space to tear down these ships and that wasn't free. So basically you're working to pay down your debt so that you can come up here and work for them. Mm -hmm. um, so that like, like I was telling Navi about the, the SRD and she's like, Oh, that's, that's really cool. What, this is how a lot of our stuff happens. Um, what would you, what would you want to make with that? I'm like, brain empty, right? I'm like, I okay, hear me out, right? <laughs> so spaceships, and you're cutting them apart, and she's like, that sounds ridiculous. I'm like, no, 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 give me, give me 48 hours, <laughs> right? Because like, basically, I pitch all of these games to Navi, and Navi is like the 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 funnel through which all of these ideas come right and uh and i remember you looked at me and you were like there is no way that you can make there is no way that you can make dying in space fun <laughs> like nobody wants to play a game where where the odds are so stacked against you that you die all the time i'm like i don't know i think there's probably some some entertainment value in there right and then what did you say when we got it to play test you're asking for like an actual quote do you remember? No. You don't? Okay. <laughs> I do. And she I mean Sean could make up whatever he wants. Exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> I could, but I don't have to because it's too good. Um, okay. So we we stop and uh and and she had amassed a stack of credits and she was like, I don't know why I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> and she's like, that was so much fun. Can we play again? Because I I was I was reading the the first edition like the 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 rough draft prompts off my laptop to her as she was like turning over cars she's like do, do the do the space voice do your space voice right <laughs> and so i'd have to and now 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 i kind of do it anyway just because i have to 
Uh, oh no, that was actually really fun as a so <laughs> as a solo game, um, it, not not co op, but kind of playing co op because we were it was we started solo. Um, having your having the other person just read the prompts, it feels a little bit like a GM oh, is yeah, navigating yeah. you through it. So that that was actually really fun too. That's before we even had co op rules because um, he wasn't playing or moving on the board or anything like that. He was just reading the prompts for me while I was moving around trying not to die. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, that's so that's so great. Um, and I like. It is really funny. Like, and there's a couple comments like this in chat. Like, you know, you've got you've got uh, like you know Souls like games that have become very popular. You know, where you just die, die, die again. Uh, and Mothership <laughs> lethality is very high, right? Like, um, a lot of a lot of games will play on this theme of the discardability of characters, and especially when they're playing in megacorp, late stage capitalist sure. things. Like, it fits in a way that we're like this is horrible, but we also understand the stakes going in. So we're going to yeah. accept it and just kind of roll through it. But yeah, then, then when you've got a handful of creds, you're like, I hate that. I love this, but I, oh, yeah. but I do. <laughs> the, the, the more you go on, the more you feel like the, the, the cunning side of the, uh, the cunning and desperate scavenger, right? Because you're less desperate, but now you've got all these cool toys and you're like, I've done this before and stuff starts feeling familiar. Like you get a, get a familiar layout and you're like, oh, okay, I know exactly where all the pinch points on the ship are are just like a souls like it's hard it's lethal but it's learnable and it's winnable yeah mm -hmm. no I, I and i think that that's the that's the thing that people are are looking really that, that's really enjoyable about it it's that it's that i can get better at this i can i can figure out how to do this um and like which is what gamblers tell themselves all the time sure. but like yeah, i've got know, a system uh, i've got <laughs> i've got i've got it worked out this time um <laughs> Uh, before we go to the next question, uh, thanks, uh, Third Floor Wars, uh, huge champions of Dead Belt and the work of a couple of Drakes, but also uh, thank you for the sub, and thank you for uh, gifting the sub to uh, Hassan also, too. We really appreciate your support of the channel. Um, uh, I'm a T-Rex. Amanda has a couple of questions. One, they do confirm it is Peach Garden Games because it is Peach local Garden. to there them. Um, but they have a question about the Kickstarter, which is uh, they usually back at a PDF level because shipping to Canada can be the worst, especially yeah. from America, because yes. it's it's 20 American dollars, which is like 25 Canadian dollars. Yeah. Um, and we're sorry. Um, yeah, but they want to know what, it, we would. what the difference between the PDF versus the physical tiers. But also, you all have some unique distribution stuff happening with this one mm -hmm. uh, that may impact some of that also, too. So uh, tell us a little bit about the tiers for the project. I've got the, the campaign mm -hmm. pulled up next to us. Sure. Uh, but let's talk about that. But again, uh, for people who haven't seen, congratulations uh, on funding. Uh, um, which was is great, especially for a holiday day launching on a Monday. Like uh, I was super excited when I when I popped on this afternoon and saw that y'all had y'all had already funded. Uh, so congratulations! Plenty of time to uh, get more people up in space, uh, dying. But you've already hit that core pledge goal. So we'll talk about stretch goals and some other stuff in a minute. But tell us a little bit about those pledge levels uh, for Amanda. So uh, PDF, as always with us, you you get everything. So there will be a printable version of, if the, if the stretch goals are unlocked, of course, there will be printable versions of the game. There will be printable versions of the um, journal if it unlocks, the achievements if they unlock, uh, or extra, the black contracts, all of that. So you'll, you, you'll always get everything from the Kickstarter that unlocks as part of your pledge. And we'll always do our best to make sure that you um, have some means of getting it uh, physically, if I'm printing at home or POD or, or, or whatever, we always try to do our best in that regard. Um, the, the next step up is go, is the printed copy. And we got one over here, so make it real easy. So the printed copy is actually a set of three booklets. The core booklet has all of your rules and some of your um, cheat sheets and things. Like we actually printed the cheat sheet on the back. Um, this one's much abused. Don't pay any mind. We, we use it a lot. Um, and then you have two oracles. So if you play player one, player two, each one can have a different oracle. They have completely different prompts in them. You can swap them back and forth. Or if you're playing by yourself, you can just play with one and the next bird grab the other one. And it kind of keeps everything feeling even fresher for even longer because you, you double your prompts. Um, which, which was actually kind of a surprise to me because originally I thought when you play co-op, if you don't have more prompts, things might get dry faster. Uh, but it ended up being the other way because when your partner reads the prompt, it feels very different than when you read the prompt. I'm mm -hmm. going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but basically I doubled the prompts thinking we needed more, but it feels like they got quadrupled because when you were playing co-op, 
it actually feels different depending on who's reading it. So that's, that's kind of cool. Fun. That's cool to know, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tons of those. But yeah, so you get your three booklets in the, in, and that's in the base tier. So they're printed. They're on really, really nice paper. Um, if you guys have seen our other projects like Skyworthy, people um, like to talk about them on Twitter. Like we are paper snobs. Like yeah. it's really nice quality. So that's what you get for the the entry. Um, once you hit the license pro kit, license pro kit that's right, um, and then into the old hat kit, you get these cool um, traveler's, like traveler's notebook. notebook covers. We're calling them space traveler's notebooks, so we're probably going to get our faces suit off. Uh, but <laughs> Midori's coming after us. <laughs> but they're really neat. So, like, they're a really cool way to transport zines that typically are kind of loose and falling apart. You can never slot them onto your bookshelves because they're just little booklets, but with these you can. They got like, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but they're really neat. They have elastics inside. So you put them all on the elastics and they hold together really nicely and popping them off of the elastics is really fast too. So this was like our prototype. It's not even like perfectly sized. So shh. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all, this is the idea though. Yeah. So that's what that gets you. Um, And then of course, if you are backing as a, we kind of, because of our new distribution, we don't really have the, we're not going to be doing a lot of pre-orders or um, like after the starter ends won't be pre-orders and we won't be doing up sales like we typically would because we're not going to be going through backer kit. So we kind of just made the um, the old hat a, a ca- like a big giant catch-all. If you want to make sure you get everything Physical as quickly as possible. Everything. Yeah physical copies of everything as quickly as, or, you know, as quickly as possible, not waiting for after distribution and whatnot. Um, you back at that tier and everything that unlocks, we'll make sure you get a physical copy. It'll all come uh, nicely packed into your little um, space travelers notebook and you'll be good to go. So that's, yep. that's the tiers. And then distribution wise, cause I remember that um, we are working with um, soul Muppet publishing um the orbital blues i mean i think everybody here knows who they are um they have connections globally so it's helping us with building um up that network and being able to send things out because uh, it's ruinously expensive to ship you to any anywhere from the united states but unfortunately it's not going to help uh canada very much because we're sending from the uk and the us so uh, i actually checked and this is how strange shipping is from the United States, um, or how expensive it is. It's the same cost to ship from the U.S. to Canada, our neighbors. Actually, I, I, we live in uh, Pennsylvania, so I could like I can reach across you the border and touch you. Up yeah, yeah exactly. I'm gonna, I, I need it to you, but it costs me the same to ship to Canada as it costs them to ship it from the U.K. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. So that's a mess, but um, people just in the tell UK, us where on the border we can we can go to just like. But but if you're like in the UK and a lot of the EU and the United States, the the post is going to be in the ballpark of like ten to fifteen dollars, which is quite reasonable. Um, but if you're in Canada, it's like twenty twenty five dollars. Um, some places are even worse. I think we all know that like Australia. I think Australians have given up on backing anything. They just <laughs> they don't they're not having it because that shipping is woo. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It is absolutely crazy right now. Like, um, I I love so the the folks over at Soul Muppet. We're we're going to be shipping down. We go to EU UK backers uh, through them also to great folks to partner with. Um, mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean there are there there it will. This book will eventually be in it. In I'm sure up in like. Uh, Rowdy or Monkey Paw or someone else will probably pick this up in Canada eventually uh, or talk to your friendly local game store and tell them they need to buy a bunch of copies also too is a great way to do it but you know even if you're just starting with the PDFs to support the campaign right now and want to upgrade to the physicals later um, it, they'll be you know you you should do it uh, and so um, I uh, yeah I there's no unless you're fulfilling out of Canada there's no good way to get things to Canada um, trying for, to figure something out for a lot of my <laughs> small zine projects holy grail yeah for a lot of my small zine projects i'm actually considering even though like we are we have a shipping company now like we're part of a shipping company for some of my smaller projects i'm even considering is it better to fill out of canada to the u.s if it's a single zine because a single zine they can letter mail to the u.s internationally and it's way 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 cheaper for them to send it here than it is for us to send it there um That's and so fair. there's fine. some absolute but, well they can also send a zine as a letter also too and we can't mm-hmm. do this is yeah. not fiction <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but uh, no, lots of lots of just really cool stuff. But yeah, whatever whatever people want to back at, they're gonna get a lot of a lot of value for that. And I do think things like this this game play really well in print. Uh, a connected question that somebody asked, and, and I don't think I've seen it anywhere. And and based on our conversations, I don't know that it's currently the plan. Are y'all gonna make the roll twenty space available to backers also too? This this bonus yeah the setup that we that played on today yeah. yeah no I I think that it works well enough that we're gonna try and clean it up a little bit and um, write out instructions so people understand how to use it and we're gonna make it available because it's it's very usable and it'll allow you to play with people um, co op but uh, as far as like coding up something official it's not in the cards no no right just now. just this right here I think <laughs> yeah. oh yeah no this was is great th this yeah. is for you guys yeah yeah like as soon as soon as like. As, as soon as the the game is out in hands, like this is going out to you guys as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then people want to know because y'all have done like Skyworthy and other stuff in house, are y'all printing and making these in house, or are y'all are y'all working with a printer? No, every bit of this is us. Yeah, like, awesome. Like um, we're we're making all of the all the covers, we're printing all of the zines, we're assembling packaging and shipping all by hand. The awesome. sticker achievement kits sticker and, and achievement all that. Kits, I've, yeah. I've gone a little overboard with um, the Ooh. printing facilities. We have so many printers and so many cool devices now. And so I have to justify my expenses by putting them to use. Yes. <laughs> uh, everybody everybody wants to know if, if, if it hurts your hands to do this work. No. No. No, it's done, no, it's done out of love for you. I guys. used to be a massage therapist, though. So, oh, like, so you got, using, you got my hands all day long. It's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the military. I, I don't have a fun story there. <laughs> love it. Uh, no, I, I love that y'all are doing that. Uh, it's so exciting to me. It's such a g huge commitment. Like as far as, I mean, time, energy, resources, like just having gotten the the press, but like I love seeing what y'all are doing. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, y'all are working with Galen uh, as the artist on, yes. on this one. Tell us a little bit about what that process has been like. Uh, a dream, honestly. Galen's amazing. Galen is fantastic. Um, I, yeah, he um, he approached us to do to do some uh, some guest work for um, for a project of his, and uh, when the awkward conversation about like payment came up, the first thing we asked was like, "So art swap?" Because he, he had <laughs> done he had done um, fan art of his belter for Dead Belt, and so he'd already shown an interest in Dead Belt, so it didn't come out of um, no, no, my no. field completely. But right, so he, he did he did the most phenomenal, just like hatchet faced, haggard, like space western, smoking in his bubble helmet and everything, <laughs> morale patches on his spacesuit, and I like I I wanted immediately like ninety of them. Like I, I oh, Kalen, this is this is the first fan art of anything that we've ever seen mm -hmm. uh, that was one of our stuff, one of our, one of our games. And, um, you know, the, the moment he reached out and was like, Hey, so I, I got this project that I'd, I'd like to have you help me out with. We're like, Hey, we have this project. We'd like you to help us out with too. And, uh, so we had to swap those really good. Yeah, swap. Work swaps are always great. Like there's three or four major entries in through the void that are all just work swaps of people who I did some work for uh, a while cool. ago who, who are now like coming back and, and working on the project. It's been, uh, super fun. Some of them are art, some of them are writing, uh, but it's super fun whenever you get, like when you just, like somebody's like, hey, will you do this for me? You're like, yeah, actually, like I was going to ask if you would do this for me. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like I love, I love being a, being a fan of, of folks and to find out that like they're fans of mine as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's uh, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if you're ever wondering, Galen, you should always hire Galen. Yes. Like uh, the professionalism, like, uh, Forget like meeting deadlines, just like blowing deadlines out of the yeah. water. Just fantastic to work with because oh, it's like a breath of fresh air when somebody's like on it. He, <laughs> he was immediately like he was back with with you know ideas, and then he's like, and let me know if uh, if, if this works for you. I'm like, ten out of ten, no notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, if anybody has any more questions, this is a great time to drop them in. Uh, but if you haven't yet, we want to remind you to go to ttrpg.link slash deadbeltks. Uh, back the project. Um, uh, if you're not able to back it right now at a full level, um, hit that PDL level. There's a $2 level that just lets you stay up to date, uh, get more information as the project develops, or any amount you contribute Like is always good in helping. Just let Kickstarter know that this is a project that you will like uh, and that you want to see supported. 
Uh, so back it any way you can. And if you can't financially support it, just consider sharing it on social media. Um, just helping get the word out there um, is one of the greatest things. Um, like I, as a creator, like when I see people sharing things, like I don't know individually which of my friends have backed things or not. I do know who has shared my work online. Um, and both things are very, very meaningful to me whenever I'm doing stuff. So um, what is injected into your heart? <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all most excited about for the game? Uh, we won't go through all the stretch goals, uh, but what are some of the things you're most excited to see kind of open up and unlock you as first. you go? It's, it's got to be the black contracts. black contracts. So the black contracts are, you touched on it earlier, they're kind of, they're meant to be an in-game kind of thing. So after you beat this game, because what you don't see in this little, um, like the game is paced nicely to where you're not overwhelmed. These ships are small starting, but they get much bigger. And as you buy the upgrades necessary to be able to tackle bigger ships, you can unlock even larger ships all the way to tier four ships, with our, which are huge, like incredibly large ships, very challenging. Um, if you, once you beat the game, if you actually <laughs> they get big. If you actually manage to beat the game, um, you could retire. But black contracts are our fun little thing to throw in at the end. And what they are are scenario based ships, um, or what they will be if they unlock, uh, where you move through each module and it's written out more um, more in a story format. So you're moving through an actual story. It's all cohesive rather than vague and evocative and interesting. So you can make your own story on every ship. It's actually a very specific story that you move through. Um, there's very dangerous, very real threats uh, moving around on these ships um, that you have to try to evade. And there's very strict rules regarding how to uh, complete a black contract, getting to the payload and getting back out, um, hopefully alive. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited about those. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as far as um, playing a, a little bit of a story game. Um, with and your dead belt. With your dead belt, right? <laughs> so if you, if you beat the game and you're really good, at, really good at it and you feel like your strategy is really tight, this will be like a really fun little capstone project. Yeah, so That's each fun. of these is your dungeon, but um, mm -hmm. you've got, you've got uh, the black contracts, which are like, now we are raiding. <laughs> Ex explore the universe however you want, but know that like all of the plot points are going to come together in a black con some black contracts at the end. The uh, rep is out there waiting for you. <laughs> That's uh, right. I love it. Uh, uh, Spencer, who's out there watching, wants to know what's the gnarliest way you've died while playing the game. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Uh, you want to go first or should I? Well, you've never died. Well, you have died, but. Should I die? I might have died. You got I'm good time. at this. Yeah. No. No, I didn't. I, I, it's, I, I broke the ship because I love breaking the ships. It's my favorite thing to do. But I broke I broke a ship and I ended up on the wrong darn side of the broken ship. So my airlock was over there. And my favorite class to play is the Void Rat. I love the Void Rat. That's why I don't get it because if there's a, a, you know, like a monster in your module, you just jump into the air vents and you're gone. So, uh, But anyways, I had a spacewalk and I died in space and I was very mad about yep. it. And she's <laughs> like, the, 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 the spacewalk mechanic is completely broken. <laughs> <laughs> completely broken. Um, the the worst the worst thing that ever happened to me though was uh, when the nanites the uh, the, 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 the merciless nanites entered into my airlock and ate my ship and I was stuck on on my ship. Oh, no, I was stuck stuck on on the derelict ship, and my ship is already gone. And the nanites are still hungry. <laughs> oh my god! What a great, so there's nowhere for me to go. What a watch great my fade to black down. moment. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. uh, well, uh, the a um, uh, couple people are in there. Uh, Spencer's egging them on, uh, uh, but Ugaron wants to know, which if I may have mispronounced that name horribly. Sorry. Uh, question: what, They want to know uh, how you see community-based projects for Dead Belt happening. Do you see people? Uh, hacking it, picking it up, creating expanded content for it. What do you, what do y'all want to or hope, hope to see in that so. area? Yeah. We really hope so. We, I mean, I think everybody who knows us knows we love community content. Um, a lot of our games are based off of other folks' games. Uh, I think we're the most well known for our Forge in the Dark games. So we love when um, we love when people take our stuff and make stuff out of it. We certainly love to take other people's stuff and make stuff out of it. And I think that's one of the best parts of the indie communities. We're all very collaborative and, um, we have very, um, I guess, lax rules. We Relaxed, kind of... relax, not lax. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, we're, yeah, we have really relaxed rules because uh, we kind of play by the 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 rule rule of cool. Take stuff, make stuff. If you're like follow common sense rules, um, 
don't be a jerk. Don't do anything bigoted right. or gross nothing or anything. Evil, nothing please. evil, please. Uh, and and take your stuff and go and do whatever you want with it. Um, you know, credit us. We love that, of course. And um, you can sell it. You, you're allowed to charge money for it. We don't ask that you not make the stuff commercial. Um, just really really basic like be cool and credit us and be human and hopefully make some money off of your yeah. fan content if you enjoy it awesome so yes please community yeah uh, absolutely people, all people, of it people are already queuing you up for uh dead belt jam um, <laughs> and so, um let's do awesome. it let's roll these uh, sixes and die yeah last question great question always the worst question to ask anybody um uh -oh. wants to know uh jumping a bit ahead uh, what's, what's in the hopper? Are there any works in progress you're, you're excited to talk about after Which one Dead do Bell? we talk about? Yeah, right. What do we, what do we talk about? Okay. Now? No, we're going to talk about Disaster Quest. Yeah? Disaster Quest? Go for it. All right. So we tend to make games. Sometimes we'll push out a game that is a, a launching pad for something else we're working on. because we're testing out some mechanics, but we're not ready to implement them into the bigger project we have in mind. We did that with the Disaster Games, which is like a stripped down Forge in the Dark that kind of, um, really narrows the mechanics down um we were and we're rolling that forward uh, removing harm using conditions playing with that kind of thing for um what we're now working on which is disaster quest which is a high fantasy game uh in forge in the dark so it's going to be a, a really good mix of combat and narrative which we haven't gotten to see a lot of in forge in the dark yet um which I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really stoked about it because I came up on uh, D and D and even though I've outgrown it, sometimes I have that, that want that yen to like, you know, get, get a model mini and move on the grid and have a little bit of tactical combat. And uh, we don't get a lot of that in our narrative game. So this is going to be one of those things again, where we're kind of filling our own need, my, my need. <laughs> Bringing tactical combat to forge in the dark in a way that isn't two games fighting in a paper bag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's important. <laughs> I love it because, yeah, Sean, you and I have talked a lot about, I mean, and Navi also too, like the theater of the mind versus like um, like tactical play yeah. where each of them create freedom, where each of them take away freedom and the exactly. mix of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very interested to see how y'all resolve that within kind of this this kind of uh, Forge in the Dark-esque um, <laughs> uh, place where there's a lot of space given to that narrative side. But it is one of the hardest games, fictional positioning-wise, to figure out exactly Absolutely. what and where things are happening because time is also a dimension that you move around in for that game. Yes. <laughs> it sure so, is. Um, uh, it is can be can be even more challenging. So I'm super excited to see that. Super excited to hear that. Um, uh, I think just one last thing I want to touch on, even though I think I said that a second ago, because because it came up earlier this week, because I think it's a good thing to touch on, uh, because like I always I I, I loved seeing what. Uh, both of y'all had to say about it, but talk a little bit about what it's like to uh, to work with your uh, your life partner as co-designer also too, because it's not that Sean designs <laughs> games or that Navi designs game, but that Sean and Navi design yes. games. It's a couple of Drakes <laughs> uh, intentionally. Um, and so talk a little bit about, um, you, you know, you talked about the pitch process earlier, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but what does that often look like or theoretically <laughs> often look like so when it comes blink up. blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's under duress here. You stop that. Um, no, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, like to be able to wake up, make coffee, have a, have a thought about games, turn, you know, speak it uh, to my partner and the partner is immediately immediately there with you like oh oh wait no hold on there's a there's something there's a nugget of something juicy in, in that weird random coffee thought right and then we'll sit down with like a napkin or a notebook or an open google doc and then we'll just hash through it for the next two to three hours and then that will be filled with a lot of like <laughs> but could we yes right and then so it's almost like um it's like tactical mind reading is what it feels like. Like she is consistently, consistently pulling like the thought that I can't quite formulate out, speaking it into the world. And then at that point, like it's easier to pin down, nail down. And then we just like shape on it together. It's, it's really cool. It's like the best part of being in like a really good band. It get, and it gets easier, um, not that it was ever super hard or anything like that, but it gets easier the longer you work together because you start to understand, uh, how do I put this? We'll have like a document open and I'm starting to fill in information while he's filling in information. And for the most part, we don't have to 
check and make sure we're working at odds. We know that we're kind of getting knocking it out. And every if something comes up, you know the one where you're going to have to be like, "Hey, is this right? Like, is this how you had in mind? Does this work here?" Uh, but for the most part, it's just this. This is going. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is weird. What is this? Uh, well, no, we're writing together for a long time. Um, so. I I love it. Like, um, there's a lot, and, and and that happens in like really good healthy partnerships. Period. But I can imagine it's only probably uh, amplified both challenges and benefits. Like by sure. by living with the person also. <laughs> too. I um you know, but you watch really you watch improv teams, right? And there's a lot of yeah. shorthand, a lot of visual symbols, a lot of learning the group. There's a, there's a concept called groupthink, which groupthink the way most people hear it is like, oh, that's the stuff oh, that no. stops innovation. Yeah. But there's another type of groupthink that is like. Oh no, when you're synced in, you're all developing the same idea simultaneously and it's building in a very different way. And mm -hmm. you can actually very shorthand know what the other person's about to do yep. before they even make that move and and automatically jump on that, enhance that and drive it forward. Sure. Um, and so it's a way of thinking as opposed to something that will in infect groups and, and prevent innovation, right? Um, and so you'll watch people who have been in improv teams together for a decade not use any symbols or tells just because they've done the thing long enough that like they'll automatically start building in that kind of group mind space. That's the uh, best description that I've heard. I didn't know that that yeah. was a thing, but that's, that's exactly the, that's exactly the space I was trying to kind of describe. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like that. <laughs> awesome. Um, the um, uh, uh, people also want to know uh, hedge omnibus win. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we're so slow. We okay, it's one of those things where we, if we have this huge um planned list of expansions because there's so many other things that we wanted to kind of tack on there and then eventually go clean it up and make it a large cohesive thing. Beautiful. So yeah, so right now and all the other courts of the fay, right? Because we promised 12 courts of the fay, and I think we have four out so far. That's why we got four more four yeah. more releases. So mm, we we just yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's such a fun game. It's such a good game, and we've just become so distracted with like all of so many other other good projects. <laughs> yeah, it's, so yeah. The skeleton is put down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm expecting a uh, uh, another another expansion for for Hedge coming out probably January, um, and then from there I've got releases planned. Um, but they're like I've already put down most of the the stuff that the new wardens are going to be doing. I've we've got the the outline, the skeleton for how the uh, the various courts are going to come together, and then uh, we've got a couple of extra surprises. There's going to be like a, a level zero funnel thing that we're attaching to it. Mm -hmm. We're doing um, more with uh, with the uh, the hedges like charges where they they give you um, give you quests that are slowly rebuilding the hedge um and then we've got like the end game that is coming up too so there's going to be like a raid level um that is that is set to set to go off at the end as well bunch of cool stuff Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love it uh the audience is excited for it all also too uh, if people want to follow your work find out stay up to date on what you're doing what's the best place for them to do that twitter Yep. Twitter. Tw 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 twitter all day yeah no uh we're, we're very present on twitter she's at navi musing um, and I'm at Drake and Dice. Uh, we talk a lot on Twitter about uh, about role playing games. Mm -hmm. um, our website is hilariously unupdated right now, but I need to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was one of the highest things that came up when I actually searched for the Kickstarter, just like flat. Uh, mm -hmm. But there wasn't a link to the Kickstarter on it. Uh, yeah, on that's the, my should, bad. On the Dead Belt page specifically. That's really my bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, every every time I'm appearing anywhere i always promise to fix that and then i never do so somebody please kick me in the butt so i do that i mean it could you could also <laughs> they, people just go to ttrpg.link slash deadbelt ks i'll take them right to the bam it's there fun. you go <laughs> and, so, right there. <laughs> and so uh awesome uh i i had such a blast playing with you i'm so glad we were able to get both of y'all um on um and um thank you to the chat for everybody um who was here it was it's always great when we have uh, an active audience people are asking questions uh, especially in a two-player game because otherwise it's like here are my thoughts and that that's it like that's, uh, <laughs> that's the extent of it uh, which i don't even know if i did i had a blast plane like let me go did ahead and say it. Okay. i'll send you good, good, I'll, good. Send I'll send y'all over a nice actual thing that i'll say that you can you can put on on things but Yay. um but no i i tremendously loved it uh love the resource management side of things um love the way the the role systems worked. Love the co-op mode. Um, it's it's a solo game that it's a game that I could see myself playing the solo version of 
uh, far more regularly. And I immediately am like, man, what is this like in rivalry mode? Because this has, it has yeah. to be brutal. So um, <laughs> here's, here's the best part about it, right? Like, so you and your buddy are playing this game. You're getting better and better at it. And eventually it comes to the point where it's like, you know, I'm pretty sure that my vet could kick your scoundrel's ass, right? And so it's like, name a tier three bird, we'll go. <laughs> we'll go and whatever, whatever, whatever happens, happens, man. And like, or sometimes it's like, hey, you know, I was going to go and I found this tier four bird, but I don't think I can take it alone. Yeah. You know, can, can you come and help me out with this? And then you guys split the booty and you go your separate ways and everything. And at that point, like your, your belter is still developing, their belter is still developing. And like it's almost like a big meta game amongst the community. So yeah, anytime like, anybody needs a anybody needs a wingman who's going to die in space, I'm right here. It does. It does feel like there is. I mean, mechanically there is. Prompt wise, there are some things, but like it almost feels like there's the two player limit is just kind of theoretical and practical as far as resources go. Yep. Theoretically, if you wanted to play in a rivalry mode or sure. play across things or move from one table to another, it's very portable open universe, which is a very, yep. very cool vibe. And they're like, this is only in the best way possible. And you've thrown out a couple of things like this, like the amount of good video game vibes that come into this that are very complimentary to tabletop are very high. Uh, Thank and you. it's very good. Um, like it is, there, there are a lot of things that like, immediately make me think of some of my favorite video games to play in the same space and that are really, really enjoyable for this um, uh, as well because it's more of that resource management, tactical decision process that um, that lets that come to the forefront a little bit more. Um, but I do love the idea of like, yeah, here's a station. We got 20 friends together and we're all getting together in rivalry mode and we're all going to raid the station oh, and yeah. whoever makes it out, makes it out. <laughs> <laughs> at the end. You'll either be wealthy um, or dead. That's Perfect. it. And so um, uh, I can't wait for the mega game version uh, of this at some point in time also, too. So um, yeah. awesome. Go Everybody go check out the uh, the Kickstarter. We've got a, a number of things happening this week on Wednesday. I'm going to be over on uh, Wandering Monsters Channel running uh, Through the Void. If you like lethal space uh, RPGs, come check out Through the Void. I'm going to be running that for the, their crew over there. We have the new, uh, the new physical Ashkins that are up on our website this week. We'll push yes. that out uh, mm -hmm. as well. You can also get the digital over on itch but it's uh about a quarter of what the final game will be all the core rules are there it's still just two pages of easy to pick up rules but uh, i'm gonna be running that for them uh this coming friday we have Albert Arm omelet from cardock games it's gonna be at 10 a.m because cardock games is in australia and so that's when we play with them um <laughs> and then we've got uh, on saturday we're continuing our apocalypse keys uh three to four part series with ray um who is the creator for that to be published by evil games uh, we've got some other great things happening uh cult exe is doing another character study uh with ray on creating a game in apocalypse keys this coming sunday morning a uh, bunch of great adventures coming up all throughout the course of the month uh leading into some really great games in spooky season also too so um Thanks, people who have hit follow or subscribe during this. We really appreciate it. You can check out all of our past content um, over on YouTube. Uh, we've never figured out a good way to end these streams, and at this point, we're not going to try. So the three of us are just going to wave at the camera until I take us offline. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks you all so much for being here.